Ethnic Armenians have accused Azerbaijani security forces of violating the ceasefire in Nagorno-Karabakh. Authorities said gunfire had been heard in the center of the regional capital. Azerbaijan denies the accusations. This comes as peace negotiations between the two sides end without an agreement. Talks in the Azeri city of Yevlach were scheduled after Azerbaijan's military victory this week over ethnic Armenian separatists in Nagorno-Karabakh. Now, the region is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan, even though most of its residents are ethnic Armenians and it has long functioned as a de facto autonomous region. At an address celebrating Armenian independence from the Soviet Union, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan called for peace. Many people think it is not adequate to talk about peace in this tense regional environment under the conditions of military conflict flaring from time to time. But particularly under these conditions, peace should be valued and peace should not be confused with a truce or a ceasefire. For more, I can now speak to Nayak Safarian. He's an independent researcher on the South Caucasus, and he joins us tonight from Washington. Welcome. Now, Azerbaijan aims to reintegrate Nagorno-Karabakh along with its population. What do you think lies ahead for the ethnic Armenians living there? Thank you for this opportunity. Um, there is really just a lot of uncertainty in the air. As you mentioned, there are some reports even of the ceasefire not being honored by the Azerbaijani side. The concerns of the Armenians of Artsakh, of Nagorno-Karabakh, are very well grounded. Some individuals and expert organizations have even gone so far as to characterize Azerbaijani policies as genocide or ethnic cleansing. So it's very difficult to imagine a secure Armenian population living under the Azerbaijani government. And I'm afraid the, the question marks loom very large. Yeah, the Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, we heard him there, he says that there is no direct threat to the civilian population of Nagorno-Karabakh. So do you think he's, he's mistaken there? I think that there is a lack of information coming out of Nagorno-Karabakh at the moment. The infrastructure has been very badly damaged anyway after nine or ten months of a blockade with very limited electricity and fuel and gas. So that is definitely one factor. The other factor is Mr. Pashinyan's emphasis that the Armenians of Artsakh, of Nagorno-Karabakh, must be allowed to continue living in their homes. There have to be mechanisms in place that guarantee their security. So the Armenian government itself is not preparing to, uh, to welcome an influx of, of refugees. Mm. Armenia, now that you talk about security guarantees, Armenia relied on Russian peacekeepers to maintain order and protect civilians. Now, we know that Russia has a, a war on its hands. It's uh, presumably distracted right now, but the peacekeepers were on the ground. So why were they not able to stop this? The Russian peacekeepers have had a, um, a mixed outcome over the past two, two and a half years, it's true. And in particular yesterday, it seems like there was a, a political decision. The, the, the rhetoric coming out of Moscow in the last two days suggests very strongly that for the leadership of Russia, the Karabakh issue has been, the status of, of Nagorno-Karabakh rather, is no longer a priority and that the policies pursued by Baku should be, they should be treated as an internal matter for, for Azerbaijan. Now, they also are emphasizing that recent, uh, recent outreach by Yerevan to the West is a contributing factor. But the only real power with, with a presence on the ground has been Russia all this time. So whatever Western initiatives have taken place, they have not been sufficient. There has been monitoring by the European Union that has uh, contributed to some, uh, to some um, security on the borders with Azerbaijan and Armenia. But on the whole, th there is no one to replace the Russians. Um, just briefly, if that is even possible, because we are looking at peace negotiations, what kind of deal would be acceptable to the two parties? 
for the Armenian side, some kind of international mechanism is highly desirable because, as I mentioned, relying on these, you know, extortionist, violent policies being put in place by Baku is not is not reasonable. So even as we speak, the United Nations Security Council is holding a discussion on this issue. If there is some kind of international mechanism that could create an atmosphere for an enduring peace, that might be the way forward. That's Narek Safari, and great speaking to you again. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get more from our correspondent, Maria Katamadze, in the Armenian capital, Yerevan. Uh, welcome, Maria. Uh, Russian peacekeepers are still evacuating Armenian civilians from Nagorno-Karabakh. So is the ceasefire holding? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, the Russian peacekeepers have evacuated thousands of Armenians, and now the uh, Armenians, uh, Karabakh Armenians, are uh, deployed uh, in uh, um, Stepanakert Airport, where the Russian military base uh, is located. So uh, we've been hearing. Uh, from locals that uh, most of them, they're still in uh, their homes hiding and terrified. Uh, they, uh, they have been hearing for a whole day the gunfire, but uh, as, uh, as of now, as they're telling us, their situation seems to uh, be more calm and stabilized. Uh, but still, they're, they're taking security measures and they're being evacuated and staying home uh, as much as they can. And tell us more about uh, how people there in the Armenian capital have been reacting to this week's events. We are actually now right at the uh, Russian embassy where some protesters have been gathering and uh, um, there's a very uh, interesting uh, development here. The, the, uh, Yervan people are coming here to uh, voice their criticism, not just uh, against their government, but to show that they're disappointed with uh, how Russia handled this uh, conflict. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, Karabakh Armenians always uh, supported Vladimir Putin. They had really good uh, relations with uh, Russian authorities. And, and this crucial moment when they needed their help, they felt like they didn't receive it and uh, they felt uh, left behind. And people here are voicing the same concerns. They are saying that Russia is not a security ga ga guarantor as it used to be. And uh, they, are, they are now changing their mind and saying that Russia is not trustable and that's not their uh, partner anymore. Right, yeah. I feel like I am dying. I feel terrible. I've been fighting for the liberation of Nagorno-Karabakh for 36 years. Unfortunately, Nagorno-Karabakh surrendered. But the fight goes on. Let's see how our two peoples coexist, and then we will see what happens. Uh, everybody in the world has to hear the Armenian people. And every time is uh, when something has happened, uh, nobody is listening, and this is wrong. Everybody has to listen to the Armenian people, because it's the wrong way to. Uh, everybody has to help. Is not very happy. It's mainly very sad, just because of uh, the attitude of our neighbors. It's terrible. I mean, specifically when you think about your ally just betray you in all the ways. So, Maria, uh, today's peace talks ended without agreement. So what happens next? Uh, yes, indeed, the peace talks ended without agreement and uh, we couldn't really expect uh, too much from a one-day meeting uh, since this conflict has been ongoing for decades. But uh, what Azerbaijani side is saying that uh, uh, they will provide fuel to Karabakh Armenians and they will make sure that emergency services can be accessed, uh, can be accessed to uh, people in need. Uh, they also said that the uh, meeting uh, was conducted conducted in a, quote, positive and constructive uh, atmosphere. Uh, so uh, after the meeting, uh, the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh officials didn't really uh, say uh, much, uh, but uh, Armenian uh, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said that uh, Yerevan would be ready to receive 40,000 of uh, 
possible uh, refugees, uh, uh, ethnic Armenians uh, coming from Nagorno-Karabakh, but also stress that it's important that they have the right to stay at their homes and not to leave uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Thanks for that. Uh, DW correspondent Marie Katamatsa in Yerevan.